Hello, my name is Dr. Rohit Sharma. I'm the founder and CEO of GrainPad Private Limited and I'm the co-inventor of Zini.ai. So I believe the greatest challenges that uh, innovative startups, especially AI powered startups can fee, uh, are facing right now in the healthcare domain is number one is uh, still there is a lack of uh, policies and uh, uh, directions from the government or government bodies around a lot of uh, topics. A lot of healthcare startups are working in silos. So the doctors are not aware about how tech works. The techies are not aware about how, how the medical domain works. And then the uh, policy makers are sometimes not from medical background and they don't know how to, you know, come about with good policies. So policy makers, doctors, engineers, and then the insurance companies, those, those, those who are the payers, although uh, they are not very prominent payers in India, but they are still playing a role. So the payer, the patient and the provider, that is the doctor and then the policy maker. These four P's are not in sync in our country and that is le leading to a lot of policy paralysis and a lack of implementation. And that frustrates the startups because they build up a solution but they don't know where to go with it. Uh, I think that is one of the greatest challenges. So I think the way forward is that uh, the government has to come up with implementation policies now. Uh, there was a lot of motivation and a lot of youngsters uh, jumped into the startup bandwagon. Uh, there was this uh, uh, impulse and uh, that was good, that was needed. But now is the time when we need the policies around implementation. And I think uh, the main uh, solutions would be number one, the government has to maybe incentivize uh, the local uh, bureaucracy or the local IS officers to uh, come up with startups in their own uh, geographic domain or their department and how uh, you know they should be incentivized to take help from startups and pay startups and that would be a very big trigger uh, at the local level for startups. Secondly, I believe uh, 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 the, the motivation for innovative startups has to increase. Uh, right now, we are, as I said, we are more focused on telemedicine and uh, software based, rule based systems. Uh, whereas uh, the West is now focused on AI powered solutions, 3D bioprinting, genetic engineering and these kind of startups require a lot of motivation, a lot of research oriented mindset, uh, a lot of high IQ, uh, uh, intelligent, educated people have to start coming into startups. Professors from educational institutes may have to come into startups and then there has to be a lot of capital infusion for sure because as I said there has to be a lot of experimentation in these. So I think policies around implementing uh, startup solutions, uh, making a payment system for startups where startups feel more secure that government is going to do pilots with them and then uh, definitely capital infusion and research oriented startups need to have a special maybe focus or special policies around them that will definitely help the startup ecosystem in our country. So this all started uh, way back when I was still my, in my internship in my medical school days. The trigger had actually started way back then only. So we were posted as interns in uh, different departments. So I was working with my professor in pediatrics and she was a very well renowned doctor in that area. And uh, I would be sitting in her OPD and my job as an intern was just to basically pile up the stack of lists. So they go into her, the patients go to her in the right order. And uh, every day I used to see more than 150 patients used to come see her within a span of 9 to 3. And these would include uh, uh, definitely children but old ladies bringing their children and uh, patients from uh, you know all across the state. And uh, I would see that they would come from so far off distances and they would barely get maybe 30 seconds of her time. And they would be able to even completely explain what's wrong with them. And sometimes the, the old ladies would forget telling something and then when, once they go outside they can't come in back and I used to observe all this and this didn't feel right to me and uh, so this was kind of the seed but I didn't know what to do I was not a techie and you know I, I wanted to do something but I didn't know what to do and then when I came into private medical practice I worked in private hospitals I did my own OPD as well so uh, while there I observed that coming to the hospital is usually the last resort for the patient like when nothing is else is working and their preference is basically go to a local quack, go to a local chemist and uh, save money, save time and uh, who would go to a doctor, spend so much time and money and all that and then once they come to the doctor they're still they're not sure if they're going to get a satisfactory answer or a satisfactory amount of time 
I mean, even as per a WHO study, uh, we on average give two minute 20 seconds per patient in India. Uh, and this is an average. So many patients must be getting less than this. So I wanted to basically build some kind of a system where patients from the very beginning get the right advice. So what Zini does is she is an AI powered uh, uh, history taking bot to be very technical. And uh, what we have built, Zini is an AI powered conversational agent that is able to automate this process. So, so far in human history, only a qualified human doctor could do this. And then because he had figured this out, he could guide the patient, you need to go here, get this investigation done, come back to me and follow this preliminary treatment path. But now with Zini, we can automate this process. We've invented a bot that is empowered with data driven learning and a lot of uh, inputs from uh, almost 50 doctors and engineers. And this is able to do the whole conversation with the patient, figure out what is probably wrong with the patient in his in its AI powered mind and then guide the patient on uh, things like what could be the probable diagnosis, how urgent is the situation, which kind of specialist is best suited for them, uh, what is the nearby uh, doctor or hospital they can go to, what kind of investigations may be ordered and a lot of educational content to read. So this is not a replacement for a doctor, but this is an intelligent engine that can become the first point of contact and a guide for the common man. Plus, this has also found applications in B2B domain where hospitals and uh, telemedicine companies are using it on their platforms to collect initial information about the patient. Uh, insurance companies are using it to uh, basically automate the underwriting process. So a lot of applications have come up from the original idea of Zini. So in future, uh, uh, we are quite motivated and excited about a new concept that, that we have brought. It's called the Zini Clinic. Uh, recently, we were even awarded the fifth Parivartan grant by HDFC Bank in, uh, to support this initiative. So it's a clinic that uh, has an AI powered bot to take patient history. There's a nurse to take care of patient vital monitoring. And the AI uh, system basically generates a preliminary report, which is shared with a remotely sitting doctor who can then again talk video talk to the patient and send a signed prescription. So this model basically is uh, not totally dependent on the human doctor being available 24 seven, but at the same time has some bridging components to give basic guidance plus connecting with the doctor. So this is a new initiative we are experimenting with and uh, seeing a very good positive response. Uh, we are working with the uh, insurance companies and telemedicine companies, as I said, that they are finding applications using Zini to collect basic patient information and then using that data to uh, for all sorts of benefits to the, to the patients as well as their organizations. And we are uh, looking forward to publishing our research. We are doing a lot of research with the findings that we have gathered so far, so far in last three, four years. So we want to work on publishing that research. So these are some of the immediate future plans that I see. In general, I see the future of healthcare to be very revolutionary in coming days. Uh, as uh, Zini itself is automating the conversation part of it, when you know the doctor does the preliminary uh, figuring out of the symptoms. There is an Israeli startup that 3D printed a whole rabbit heart. So you can print human organs. That would be, <laughs> I don't know when where aging would go from there. And then Elon Musk created a robot that could perform brain surgery on a pig completely without human intervention. So from initial evaluation of symptoms to examination to investigations to even these things like printing organs to uh, robotic surgeries, I see a lot of revolution happening. I would want to see a lot of that happening in India as well. Uh, but let's see what we get to from here. But overall, the sector has a lot to offer in the next 10 to 20 years.